friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to show you how I dehydrate rhubarb. It's super easy. I do not blanch, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this video was just to show you how easy it is. And blanching, don't do it when it comes to rhubarb, especially because it is a messy if you do that. Where I found that dehydrating it raw it turns out beautiful and it rehydrates well. You do actually got to cook it a little bit to get it to rehydrate good. Whereas if you blanched it first, you might not, you just might need to soak it. But when it comes to dehydrated rhubarb, I'm going to use it in something I'm going to cook anyway, such as some kind of fruit crisp where I want to mi maybe mix it in with the berries. Then in that case, I would just simply cook it for a little bit first it doesn't take long or soak it in hot water if nothing else then throw it in to the pie or the crisp or whatever it is i'm making you can even make jam with it you're you got to cook it anyway you just simply add enough water to really get it to thicken up and uh, your sugar however it is you're making your jam personally i have not done that yet though i know you can I've only just tried cooking some up to see how well it worked and it worked out beautifully. I wanted to make sure I could do that before I continue to dehydrate more. You could also, after rehydrating it, which I think in this, in a lot of cases, simply soaking it in hot water would be good enough and then strain off the excess liquid. You could use it in smoothies and whatever else you like to use rhubarb in. You could even, and I've done this before, you can even powder it up and use it to add that sour flavor to whatever dish that you're making. So really it's as simple as just hacking it up and then putting it on your tray. So I'm gonna get busy on this. I'm using my Nakano knife that I still really love this thing. I, I am still gonna do a separate video on the Nakano knives, but they're supposed to be sending me more of these so I can sample the other styles of these. But anyway, loving this knife and by the way i cut this little end off too it's probably not that necessary but i do just go ahead and cut that off as well as cut off the leaf end because you don't want to use the leaves the leaves are said to be toxic so you can use them to make a pesticide if you want though slugs will still eat the rhubarb leaves so i always wonder about that one anyway let me get busy chopping these up see I'm not a professional chef or anything when it comes to cutting I just like having a good knife so it makes the job easier anyway then once I have these sliced up I do try to check and see if I got like this one is a little bit on the thick side good idea to go ahead and you know see if you got any a little bit too big and just cut them in half it's not going to be that big a deal they dehydrate up pretty well and then I just put them on my trays so you'll see here there's cloth on this. I always use cloth on these kind of trays whenever I'm doing herbs or things that aren't really, really wet. And I'll even do apple slices on these. But some of your things like peach slices and stuff can uh, stain, but mostly for smaller things that just prevents it from falling through. And it does also help speed up the drying process. And I use only cotton. Natural fabrics is what you want to look at and cotton sheets are the best. If you got some old cotton sheets, just wash them up and then cut them to fit your trays. I actually did a video just on this. I'll link to down below, but really you can hem it or not hem it. So I have these for my Kasori as well as for my Nesco. Obviously the Kasori ones are easier because they're just rectangular. So I didn't have to cut, you know, the hole out in the middle and all that like I do for my Nesco. But I tend to use my Nesco a lot more in the summer because then it's easier for me to tote around and plug into our solar power. Sometimes I'll put on hot days, I'll dehydrate outside. And then on cooler days like today, I dehydrate inside and in all cases, plugging it into our solar, one of our solar outlets. So at any rate, um, just spread them around on your trees like this. So like I said, uh, the only thing I've ever tried blanching before dehydrating because I was following the directions was rhubarb. And after that, I said never again because it was such a mess. And there's very few things I will cook first. I'll cook pumpkin and other types of squash that I'm gonna powder simply because it's easier. Just cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, 
bake it, then scoop it all out when it's nice and soft and then spread it on your trays. It just makes it so much easier. But when it comes to everything else, like snow, even snow peas and green beans, I do not blanch them, whether it be I'm gonna freeze them or dehydrate, do not blanch. It's They turn out so much better if you don't blanch them, trust me. And you just saved yourself a lot of time and work by not going that extra step. And then my general rule of thumb is I almost never dehydrate anything above 115 degrees. Some meats I will, but typically when it's on my dehydrator, 115, that way I know I'm preserving most of the, as much of the nutrients as I can. And honestly, I do not remember how long it takes. It will vary depending on the type of dehydrator you're using, the brand, how old it is, whether or not you have a lot of humidity in the air, this will make a big difference on dehydrating times because if you live in a very humid climate, it can take longer than if you live in a dry climate, which just stands to reason. So 115 degrees, I just say with your, whatever dehydrator you have, if you're using an electric dehydrator, I would say at least check it after four hours. And then after that, check it every couple of hours and just, you know, feel them. They should be very, very dry, even kind of crispy when they're done. And then uh, you might just want to keep track in your head what, or even write down whenever you're doing a new dehydrating thing, how long it takes for your particular dehydrator for your specific things. I don't keep track. I just have a rough idea and I check things, especially when you're dehydrating on a lower temperature, there's little concern about it burning. So that's another reason why going with a lower temperature is better because even if it goes for too long, you forget about it, it's just gonna get very dry. Certain herbs though, you do have to be careful with because you know, you want, you know, some herbs are more delicate than others. So setting it at a lower heat and then keeping an eye on it. Golden oregano I found to be one of the most delicate. It is the one that's most likely to turn brown, which means it was in there for too long or and or the heat was too high. But when it comes to your fruits and vegetables, it's very unlikely you're going to burn it. So I wouldn't concern yourself so much. So I'm gonna, um, I'll finish cutting these other two up and get them on the other tray and get those going. But really it's as simple as that. And then when they're all done, they should look like that. Very beautiful. I, I just, I love how lovely these look in the jar. And then they're gonna take up a lot less space in your storage. Now, I do freeze some rhubarb. It also freezes up beautifully as well. And so that I usually use to juice, and then I'll turn that into a rhubarb wine. And um, and I have a video on that if you wanna check that out, I'll put it in the description box down below. But other than that, mostly rhubarb is something that just gets added with other fruits, whether it be peaches. In fact, I'm right now working through a peach rhubarb butter I made a couple of years back and boy, is it good. I'm, I'm adding it, I forgot all about it. So right now I'm adding it to my plain yogurt and it makes a really great treat like that. And so there, and I would just as easily use the dried rhubarb to do that. It's just, I've never had to because I'm usually trying to work through the fresh stuff. And if there's anyone out there that dehydrates rhubarb and then uses it for various things, since I don't, I have yet to use my dried rhubarb for much, please share this down below. Any Anything that you've used yours for, how well has it worked for making pies, desserts, smoothies, whatever it is, jams, butters, and so on. Share, with, share your ideas with us down below. I'd love to know because I think it would be great. But uh, remember, if dehydrating isn't your thing, freezing rhubarb is great. I just am trying to save on freezer space. I already have a lot of rhubarb in there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.